Everything that moves, hides, or grows teeth does it for one reason. Something wants to eat it. Remove that pressure, and life takes a very different path. So what kind of world would we have if predators never existed? Predators come in all shapes and sizes. It is easy to think of the tigers and alligators, the sharks and the bears. But they also include many birds, small mammals like stoats and weasels, and plenty of invertebrates like spiders and scorpions. Even microbial life has its own predators. Despite their diversity, predators share one crucial role. They hold ecosystems together. Without them, food webs unravel. Yellowstone is a perfect example. When wolves were wiped out in the early 1900s, elk numbers exploded and rapidly overgrazed young trees. Songbirds lost habitat, riverbanks eroded, beavers and fish vanished, and coyotes boomed, wiping out small mammals. With no apex predator to keep herbivores in check, the entire system collapsed in a classic trophic cascade. So, the presence of predators on Earth has shaped life as we know it. Think of all the different life forms, all the different body shapes, types of mobility, defense mechanisms, and behaviors driven by predators. The shells of tortoises and turtles, the spines on hedgehogs and porcupines, the agility and speed of the gazelles and antelopes, poisonous amphibians, and the vast array of warning colors and sounds meant to deter any predators from an easy meal. Think of all the habitats animals live in and the way they live in them. Some only come out in the day to avoid nocturnal predators. Others roost in trees to keep safe from the ground. Others dig burrows. Some animals are camouflaged. They blend into their environment or look like an entirely different animal altogether. Some grow to enormous sizes to avoid predation, something that was clear in the Pleistocene with the dominance of the megafauna. Wherever you look, whichever prey animal you think of, you can find a whole range of ways it has evolved and adapted to avoid predation. And the same goes for predators themselves. Some are fast and powerful, some remain still and undetectable. Some use venom, others use strength. They too have been molded by competition, the environment, and the necessity to secure prey. What was life like before predators? Predation didn't begin with animals. Its roots go much deeper. Before animals existed on Earth, microbes were thriving. And scientists believe that the predatory behavior of some of these microbes was the catalyst for all other life on Earth. They may not have the canines of a lion or the power of a crocodile, but microbial predators can engulf other microorganisms. They can drill into their cell membranes and suck out their nutrients. And some can even chase and swallow prey microbes whole. It's still a fearsome battle between life and death, just on a microscopic level. It is believed that this behavior drove evolution. Some microbes developed speed to get away. Others built cell walls or started to become multicellular, and others established sensory structures to detect danger. Setting microbial predation aside and returning to the original question, what if predators never evolved, then we can imagine what the world would look like without any multicellular predators. Life would still have evolved from other external pressures, such as those from climate changes, food resources, or the need to find a mate. But life forms would likely be a lot simpler, there would be far less pressure to evolve different features and characteristics. Earth would mostly consist of microbial mats, algae, sessile filter feeders, and slow-moving, soft-bodied organisms like sponges. There wouldn't be any need to move quickly by running, swimming, or flying. The only reason to move would be to find a food source or a mate, and modern-day sessile organisms manage to do that without large amounts of movement. In the ocean, spores or sperm and eggs are ejected into the water column by many different animals and carried on the currents. This is a process called broadcast spawning and is used by sponges, coral, and some echinoderms like starfish, as well as some mollusks and fish. They filter feed too, sticking their tentacles out into the water to capture food and nutrients floating around them. So movement isn't essential for animal life to thrive. Of course, predation isn't the only driver for evolution. As already mentioned, organisms are driven to change and adapt to a variety of pressures within their environment. So it is possible that some complex life could exist. 
If they were only herbivores, then they would rely on vegetation for food, but with no predators to keep populations in check, there would be a classic boom and bust of species. This is seen today on Earth when predators are eradicated from a particular area, just like in the Yellowstone example already mentioned. The prey species thrive until all the resources are used up. They then begin to die off in mass because the ecosystem cannot support their numbers. Only when the ecosystem has recovered can the herbivore populations begin to build up once more. It leads to a very unhealthy ecosystem, which is why it is so important to manage predators carefully in the wild today. How lifespan might change If food was plentiful during the optimal population size, then individual animals may live considerably longer than they would if predators existed. In the wild today, prey species rarely die from old age. As they become older, they obviously become easy pickings for hungry predators, and so life expectancy would grow in the absence of predators. This may lead to the development of age-related diseases or changes in social structures. Today, we are used to seeing prey species grouping together. Birds flying in flocks, fish swimming in shoals, herbivores grazing in herds. This behavior evolved from safety in numbers. There are more eyes to spot potential danger, and statistically, individuals are less likely to be taken. Sticking together makes sense when there are predators around, but living a solitary life might be better when food sources are becoming scarce and there's no danger of you being eaten. The evolutionary tree without any predators would look a lot simpler than it does today. There would be far fewer branches because life forms would be less complex. Many major transitions of organisms throughout Earth's history relied on predation to kickstart them, such as hard shells, skeletons, vision, burrowing, flight, speed, and venom. It is possible that vertebrates, including we humans, simply wouldn't exist. Why would an invertebrate need to evolve to grow a backbone if they didn't need to get bigger or stronger or faster? Why would animals need to develop complex vision if there were no dangers surrounding them? Simply determining night from day would be enough to function without needing to see in detail. The same goes for complex nervous systems. There would be no need to have a complex brain or sensory organs that can see, feel, taste, smell, and hear in as much detail as complex animals do today. If the organisms were only feeding on plant matter and didn't need to communicate or sense danger in their environment, then these senses would be unnecessary. Now, as with physical traits, predators also shaped cognitive evolution. Predatory pressure led to increased intelligence. Higher intelligence often evolved as a survival tool, avoiding threats, coordinating hunts, problem solving. If you remove predators, then you remove one of the key selective pressures for big brains. When an animal's survival depends on detecting threats, avoiding them, outmaneuvering them, or in the case of predators, outsmarting and catching prey, Natural selection rewards individuals with faster processing, better memory, and more flexible decision-making. Over millions of years, these small advantages accumulate into complex nervous systems and larger brains. For prey animals, predation creates intense pressure to develop more sophisticated forms of vigilance. They benefit from improved spatial awareness to track danger in their surroundings, better pattern recognition to distinguish predators from harmless species, rapid learning and memory so that one narrow escape can improve future survival, coordinated group behavior such as flocking, schooling, or herding. There are two radically different possibilities depending on whether herbivores evolve in the absence of predators or not, and both scenarios would change the landscape considerably from what we see today. If complex life forms did not evolve, then vegetation in some areas would be more dense, with expanded forests and fewer open grasslands. Only a few plant species would dominate, reducing biodiversity. With denser vegetation, wildfires could be more intense, or green areas could become deserts due to ecological imbalances. Plants that rely on animals to spread their seeds wouldn't exist. There would be no need for plants to develop thorns or toxins. And with fewer pressures from browsing, plants may be less resilient to change. If, however, herbivores existed in the absence of predators, then plant life would have to adapt accordingly. With herbivores unchecked by predation, plants could have a really tough time. Either they would endure the endless cycle of boom and bust, or they would evolve exceptional deterrents. Some might produce far more thorns than we see today, 
or powerful toxins or produce excruciating stings if touched. Some may evolve to take advantage of the boom and bust cycles, timing their fruiting accordingly or lying dormant during the toughest times. In the end, imagining a world without predators really shows just how deeply they shaped life on Earth. Without them, evolution would have moved at a slower, simpler pace, leaving us with a planet full of soft-bodied drifters, dense vegetation, and ecosystems constantly swinging between boom and bust. Predators didn't just make the world dangerous, they made it dynamic. They pushed life to get faster, sharper, tougher, smarter. They're the reason we have everything from sprinting gazelles to camouflaged insects, to complex brains capable of curiosity and storytelling. So, while it's fun to picture a peaceful, predator-free Earth, the truth is that the wild, balanced, astonishingly creative planet we know today exists because predators did. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.